Okay, welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's Math Channel, and this is question number nine, the last question on the June October 2020 paper for the International A Level at Excel Pure Mathematics P3. And uh, the part A of this question is for us to um, write this algebraic fraction in the form given. All right, so it says find the values of the constant P and show that Q equals 5. Okay, so basically we have to simplify this algebraic fraction. Now, the way to, to deal with a question like this is um, there are a number of ways we could actually do it. We could do it by comparing coefficients. We could do it by algebraic long division. It seems to me that this particular question would probably be most easily dealt with by using a algebraic uh, long division method. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write the denominator on the outside of my division x squared minus x minus 12 there's nothing missing here everything is there x you've got the squared term the x term the constant term here you've got the power 4 power 3 power 2 power 1 power 0 so that's fine everything's there there's nothing f missing here for us to fill in with 0 so that's fine x to the power 4 minus x to the power 3 minus 10x squared plus 3x minus 9 just make sure you don't make any mistakes copying the numbers down Okay, so x squared times something gives you x to the power 4. Well, that's x squared. You write that on the top. x squared times each of these terms will give you x to the power 4 minus x to the power 3 minus 12x squared. And when you subtract these two lines, th that will give you 0. That will also give you 0. And this will give you minus 12. Remember, you're going to have uh, minus, minus 10, sorry, minus minus 12, which is minus 10 plus 12 which is going to give you 2x squared. Bring the other terms down, which is the, th the 3x, sorry, and the minus 9. Okay, 3x and the minus 9. Let me just do that better. So you're going to have um, plus 3x minus 9. 2x squared, um, x times 2, x squared times 2 gives us 2x squared. So I'm just going to put plus 2, and you're going to end up with 2 times x squared, which is 2x squared. 2 times minus x, which is minus 2x, and 2 times minus 12, which is minus 24. And now when I subtract these two from each other, I should get my um, remainder. That's going to give you 0. You're going to have minus 3 minus minus 2, which is 5, so that's 5x, and minus, 20, minus 9 minus minus 24, which is 24 minus 9, which gives you 15 plus 15. Okay, so that's minus 9 plus 24, just to make sure. Oops. Gives you 15. So you end up with 5x plus 15, and that's your remainder. That's what's left over. So you can say that um, our original expression, which is x to the power of 4 minus x to the power of 3, minus 10x to the power of 2 plus 3x minus 9 over x squared minus x minus 12 is equal to uh, you're going to have x squared plus 2 which is your yeah that's your quotient and then this is the remainder so you're going to have plus 5x plus 15 over and you have your denominator which is x squared minus x minus 12. Now it's not quite how we're supposed to write it yet and that's because this can be simplified. We can factorize this and factorize the top and simplify it. So let's go ahead and do that. So you can actually f simplify this as writing this as you've got x squared plus 2. Now this is going to be plus 5 times x plus 3 over and this factorizes into two brackets. You're going to have x plus and x minus so you're going to have x plus 3 and x minus 4 that's going to give you x squared minus x minus minus x minus 12 that's correct and the x plus 3's will cancel so you're now left with x squared plus 2 plus 5 over x minus 4 and that's exactly what we had to show x squared plus p plus q over x minus 4 and find the value of the constant p and show that q equals 5. So we, we've shown that q equals 5, that's your q, and p is equal to 2.
P is equal to 2, and we've shown that Q is equal to 5 there. And there's the answer to our question, part A. Okay, so that algebraic long division made that very simple. Okay, now, next part of the question, that's a 2 and that's a 5. Okay, find the equation to the to, of the tangent to the curve um, at the point where x equals 2. So, we just worked out that you got x squared plus uh, x squared plus 2 plus 5 of x minus 4. You have x squared plus 2 plus 5 over x minus 4. So they're asking us to find the equation of the tangent to c. So we got to find that. We got to find g dash of x. That tells us the gradient of the curve. Okay, the gradient of the curve. To find the equation of a tangent, we need two things. We need one, the gradient. And two, we need a point. Okay, we need the, the, the coordinates of the point where x equals 2. So first, let's find the gradient. The gradient function, um, we can just differentiate this. You have x squared. First of all, let's write down what g of x is first. We know that g of x is equal to x squared plus 2 plus 5 over x minus 4. So if I find the gradient function, if I differentiate this, um, I can rewrite this first as x squared plus 2 plus 5 times x minus 4 to the power of minus 1. And then I can use, uh, I can differentiate this using, well, for these two is fine, that's 2x. The 2 will c cancel out. Now I have to multiply by the power, so I get minus 5 times x minus 4, and take 1 from the power, I get to the power of minus 2. So I know g dash of x is equal to 2x minus 5 over x minus 4 squared. So we can say when x equals 2, because we've got to find the tangent when x equals 2. Okay, when x equals 2, g dash of x, g dash of 2 basically is going to be 2 times 2 minus 5 over 2 minus 4 squared, which gives you 4 minus 5 over, this is going to be, um, 2 minus 2, which is minus 2 squared, which is going to give you 4. 4 minus 5 over 4, which is minus a quarter. This is, uh, no, this is going to be, yeah, that's going to be uh, s minus 11 over 4, sorry. No, in fact, not minus a quarter, what am I talking about? It's going to be 11 over 4. That's 16 over 4 minus 5 over 4, which is 11 over 4. So the gradient of the tangent is going to be 11 over 4. Okay, and we need to know the coordinate of when x equals 2, we've got to find what g2 is. Okay, now g2, if we take the function here, we've got x squared. So it's 2 squared plus 2. And you're going to have plus 5 over 2 minus 4. Okay, that's g2. So g2 is equal to, that's 4 plus 2 plus 5 over minus 2. That's going to be 6. Um, minus 5 over 2. Okay, that's 6 minus 5 over 2, which is going to be 12 over 2 minus 5 over 2, which is 7 over 2. 12 over 2 minus 5 over 2 is 7 over 2. So we know that the, um, the point is 2 and 7 over 2, and the gradient of the tangent is 11 over 4, and we have to find the equation in the form y equals mx plus c. So we've got y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. So we have y minus 7 over 2 equals m, which is 11 over 4, times x minus 2. So what we can do here is we can just multiply, because we want to find y equals mx plus c. So we can just say y minus 7 over 2 equals 11 over 4 times x minus, if you multiply these two, you're going to get... 11 over 2, because the 2 comes with a 4. So you're going to have y equals 11 over 4x minus 11 over 2 plus 7 over 2. So y equals 11 over 4x, and you're going to have minus 11 plus 7 is minus 4 over 2. So minus 11 over 4x minus 2. 11 over 4x minus 2, there's the answer to that part. Of the question and I think that was the last question um, no it's not
there's a part C. That's part B of the question. Uh, find the equation of the tangent to the curve at the point where x equals 2. So we found the gradient of the curve by substituting um, 2 into the gradient function. Okay, so first of all, we found the gradient function by differentiating this, and then we put x equals 2 into that. And then we found the coordinates of the point um, where we have to find the gradient. We have to find the tangent by putting x equals 2 into the original equation. Okay, and we ended up with 7 over 2 there. And then we used that point and that gradient to therefore find the equation of the line. That's the answer for that part of the question. Okay, now for part C. The question 9, part C, which is the last question on this paper. And here we're told that there's a curve. Um, well, this curve, we've got to find uh, um, the area of the part which is shaded in this curve between 0 and 2, area under that curve between that curve and the x-axis and x equals 0 and x equals 2. Okay, and this is, um, we've got to find the exact area, area of R, writing the answer in the form A plus B lin 2, where A and B are constants to be found. So basically, to find the area under a curve, we need to take the curve, uh, the equation of the curve, and integrate it with the limits um, of, you know, the bounds where we have to find the area, so between the limits of 0 and 2 here. So what I do is I'm going to take the original function here, and I'll take it in this form, which is easy for us to integrate, which is x squared plus 2 plus 5 over x minus 4, and integrate this with respect to x between the limits 0 and 2, as they ask us to, between 0 and 2, okay? And that should give me the area that's required, and I have to express it in this form here. So to integrate this, we're going to have the square brackets now. Integrating x squared gives you x cubed over 3. Add 1 to the power, divide by the new power. Integrating a constant just gives you the same number with the x with it. That's 2x. And integrating 5 over x minus 4. Now, we can't write this as 5 times x minus 4 to the power of minus 1, because when you add 1 to the power and divide by the new power, what's going to happen is it's going to become 0. Uh, do not divide by 0, so it's undefined. So this is one of those that integrates in terms of lin. Okay, if the numerator is a constant and you have an x term in the denominator um, to the power of 1, like x minus 4 to the power of 1, you can use lin. So this is going to be 5 times the lin of the modulus, don't forget the modulus, always the modulus of x minus 4, okay? And then you divide by the differential of what's inside the function. Now, the differential of x minus 4 is just 1, so you divide by 1, that doesn't make a difference. And we have to use the limits of 2 and 0, therefore we don't put plus c. So now we can take this and substitute 2, and then substitute 0 into here. Okay, don't forget the modulus. This modulus is very, very important. Okay, because it will affect your answer. And the modulus tells us to only take the positive, uh, the magnitude of what comes in here, um, ignoring the negative sign. So now we're going to have 2 cubed over 3. So 2 cubed over 3 plus 2 times 2 plus 5 times the lin of the modulus of 2 minus 4. Then you've got minus, and then we've got to put 0 into all of this. Well, that's going to give you a 0 and a 0, so we can ignore those two going to have 5 times the lin of minus 4 modulus. Okay, so that 0 goes in here, that's going to be lin of minus 4, but in the modulus sign. So this is going to give me 8 over 3 plus 4 plus 5 times the lin of 2. Okay, because I'm going to have the magnitude of minus 2, which is just 2. And I'm going to have minus 5 times the lin of 4. Okay, the magnitude of minus 4 is 4. Now, remember, we want to express this in terms of uh, lin 2. So what I can do here is I can write this as, well, first of all, 8 over 3 plus 4 is 8 over 3 plus 12 over 3, which is 20 over 3. I'm going to have 5 lin 2, and this is going to be minus 5 times lin 2 squared. I'll write this as 2 squared, and then I can use the power law, so I have 20 over 3 plus 5 lin 2 minus, this is going to give me 4 times, uh, 20 times 5, 2 times 5 is 10, 10 lin 2, so I end up with 20 over 3 
minus 5 lin 2. 20 over 3 minus 5 lin 2. And there's my final answer. Okay, that's the area under the curve between those values A plus B lin 2. And you can see from here our A is 20 over 3. And our B is equal to, does it say plus here? Plus here. So B is equal to minus 5. Okay, so that's the answer to question 9, part C. And I think that was it. That's the end of the paper. Okay, that's the end of the paper. I think that's it, yeah. Yeah, question 9 was the last question on this paper. So we're done. Okay, so there's the answer to part C. And, um, okay, so if you'd like to see other questions from this paper, you can click on the playlist that should show here, which should have the pa questions from this paper all collected together. And that's the paper of October, uh, sorry, June, stock October 2020. Underneath it, you'll find a playlist which is for the topic of integration. Um, and I guess this is both integration and differentiation as well, isn't it? So I guess I'll put this in a playlist, one for integration, one for differentiation. Okay, so that's like a bit of a mix here. And I will put an icon here for you to subscribe to the channel if you wish to. And on the top, I'll give you a link to another P3 paper. Thank you for watching. I hope you understood that completes this paper, P3 of October, November 2020. Um, I hope to see you again soon.